Hey, Alex. Hey, Andrew. What is what is this? This is brains on the outside, man. Oh gosh, what, what's that? It's a podcast where we dream up ridiculous businesses to solve the world's issues. Oh yeah, each week we take one of our listeners' problems and we pitch a company, a product, or a service to help them out. And then we have a fight about who's was the best. <laughs> our previous pitches have included a pocket microwave and a shop where you have to steal the stuff you want. Alex, I actually have a, a slight question and problem with myself before we get into the video one. Oh, okay. So I was running, right. I was running, I uh, went for 10K on Friday. Okay. And my legs have been in extreme pain since then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I haven't, I, I, I only usually run 5K. I've not run more than 5K for the last like six years. So I was like, I was like dying. And in the morning after I woke up and I was like, I want to get out of bed, mm -hmm. but I'm not ready to put my clothes on. <laughs> so I guess my question is, why isn't there a third type of clothing? There's pajamas and there's your normal clothes, but why isn't uh -huh. there this in-between middle state? So it's like, you feel good about yourself for changing out of your pajamas, but you've not made the commitment of putting your actual clothes on. Oh, wow. Okay, like kind of like brunch, but for clothes. That, oh my God, yes. So <laughs> I, I, I was telling someone about this and they were like, that bit, what about loungewear? And I was like, that doesn't count. Why doesn't it count? I thought, I, I mean, that feels like brunch. I don't know. Loungewear is brunch. I, I feel it have to be, I feel that's just clothes. I don't know what huh. I want. But I feel, is it is it just clothes that you wouldn't wear outside of the house? Um. Yeah, you, you wouldn't wear them to Tesco. You wouldn't wear them okay. to Tesco. I mean, I once went in my slippers to Tesco, so I'm I'm not sure I'm the best person to ask. I've, I've done the same, so maybe I have yeah. no standards here. <laughs> and I, I sometimes do wear a pajamas. If I'm taking like the rubber shots, I'm always doing pajamas outside. This oh, is, yeah. I don't know. I, just, I feel this is an unsolved problem. Science hasn't caught up yet. Yeah, I have a couple of times run down the street in Kate's dressing gown. So maybe that's uh, it. Yeah. Just to ch usually chasing the bin man. I mean, I see usually chasing the bin man, always chasing the, the bin, the bin lorry <laughs> with my bin. Um, yeah. I, I feel like it would be something that would wrap around you, bunch clothes. <laughs> but I don't know. Yeah. Like, yeah. A dressing gown feels like, I, I don't know. I, I, I uh I I really like the idea of like a full set of PJs, you know, like nice ones, fancy oh. ones. But I get so fucking hot in bed. Oh yeah, it's terrible. The yeah. Bed is still an unsolved problem as well. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. It's I but bed is in on one hand so comfortable and amazing, and on the other hand, I'm really fucking irritated by the fact I can't find a good pillow and it's always so fucking hot. Yeah, it's 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 always they have bed too needs to have better ventilation. Yeah, better back support. I'm getting yeah. I sound like an old man saying that, but <laughs> I can feel I can feel the lower back problems coming. I just it's just weird after two hundred million years of human evolution, we haven't figured this out. Yeah, it's it's annoying, isn't it? I, I what happened? Like, if you sleep on your side, what do you do with the other arm? Where does it go? I can't even I can't even picture it in my head right now. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's in the wrong place. We should have had two arms on one side of our body. Oh, so your 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 solution is change human evolution through yeah. CRISPR and genetics. Two arms <laughs> on one side, and then you can lie on the bed on this side. On the other side, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there are some other issues with that, but at least ah. you sleep well. Wow. Ah. Yeah. How's your week, Alex? Do you have a good time? Do you have a fun time? Do you have an innovative time? Did you do a 10K? I, did you do a 10K, Alex? I did a mental 10K. <laughs> what's I did a, a 10K in my mind. What's a, what's a mental 10K? Uh, I ran an innovative mental 10K. I, I, did, I, I came, came up with 10 kilometers worth of ideas. That doesn't make any sense. That's no. that's not a thing, Alex. No. Okay. Fine. Stop trying to lessen my achievement. 
<laughs> you were the one who asked me whether I ran 10K. I am knowing that I hadn't run 10K. <laughs> trying to highlight my I own dick thing to do, wasn't it, actually? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually, I ran 11K. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, that shows me. Yeah. Um, do, we, do we have a, a, a question from a listener this week? I believe we do. Yes, I believe we do. Morning, Alex and Andrew. This is Ashpatha, and this is my question that I hope you can help me solve with one of your many fabulous business ideas. Um, So we've got an indoor cat. His name is Pi, and he is all things fabulous. However, Pi is tormented by all of the vagrant cats in the neighborhood and the magpies that have decided to make our back garden home. Um, Do you have a solution to keep the cats and magpies off the grass and vegetable boxes in the back of our house and therefore away from the French doors where they come and basically have fights with my cat through the glass. Thanks very much. Bye. <laughs> have you, you ever had a cat, Andrew? I've never had a cat. I've had a hamster. Oh. I've not even seen the film Cat Woman. <laughs> so that's how far away I am. I have seen, I heard though, Halle Berry the Catwoman also got bullied because of the movie Catwoman, like Ashmita's cats. There's a really good video, a YouTuber of her accepting her. Is it a Razzie? Yeah. And her just, she doesn't, she's, she goes to pick it up in person and she just <laughs> fucking roasts everyone involved in the movie. She like, dry, <laughs> she drags her agent out and just berates them and then drags her co stars out and she's like, to put in a performance this terrible, you need terrible people to work with. <laughs> <laughs> it's excellent. Wow, well, that's fully embracing it. I, yeah. I have a huge amount of respect for that. That's good. Have you ever had a cat? Have you ever had a cat yeah. who's been bullied? No, I had a cat who was a bully. Oh, shit. <laughs> but he didn't Part bully the other problem. cats. He bullied humans. Oh, wow. He was an absolute, he was a dick. He was called Archie. Uh, I had him when I was a student. Uh, he was he was a real angry, a real piece of shit. Little, yeah. Did you yeah, trade him? Was to... Fine with me, but like everyone else, he was just he just hated. Did was part of like how you trained him to behave like this? Did, 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 <laughs> did these tendencies just arise naturally from living with you? I I think he was a frustrated cat because he he mostly lived inside and we right. had um, you know we had a nice flat but it, like he lived inside and and there was a big big road outside so we'd sit in the window and look at the cars outside um, and we'd let him out the back sometimes but it was like we lived in the city so it wasn't great for him eventually uh, he moved we 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 gave him away we gave him away to a farm and we used to get emails or messages from the farm that was like. Archie's doing great. He's having a great fun time. He doesn't bite anymore. Uh, He's uh, a lovely cat. He's such a nice boy. Alex. <laughs> Alex. Alex. Yeah. Are you are you sure? Are you <laughs> sure your cat went to a farm? <laughs> Cause it kind of sounds like Archie got hit by a car one day and your mom was like, oh no, we had to give him away. He's living in a farm, Alex. <laughs> No, he really, really yeah. actually went to a okay, farm okay. for real. Yeah. So, uh, uh, which since you are much the, happier at. since you're the designated cat expert, do you have the do you have the first business idea to pitch today? Yes, I do, actually. And I was thinking about Archie while I was thinking about this because this would be perfect for him. I think. <laughs> so, as I see it, there are two problems with cats fighting in your garden right yeah one is the cats are fighting it's not great you know sometimes they get injured um that's bad obviously you know no one likes to be bullied (laughs) the second problem though is it's boring (laughs) it's it's boring like it's not exciting there's no drama the worst that happens is that they hiss at each other and they scream and they make a lot of noise and they leap around the place and, you know, maybe they bat at each other a little bit. You know, but cats are going to do what cats are going to do, right? They're territorial. They like their space. You know, they are aggressive sometimes. So 
I'm personally not in favor of preventing this natural behavior of the cats. <laughs> okay. All right. Why fight I think, nature? Why fight it? Yeah, exactly. Let's embrace it and teach those cats the value of making large amounts of money in the process. Okay. So what I'm thinking is the Worldwide Cat Wrestling Federation. The WWCWF. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to fully go WWE style uh, wrestling drama with the cats. We're going to teach them how to fight in a wrestling style, a wrestling manner. We're going to introduce a lot more drama and excitement. We're going to have costumes. We're going to have rings. We're going to have, um, you know, what is the guy, the, the ringmaster? What's the person called in the referees? Referees, yeah, is that, that what they're called? I, in I, 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 uh, I've never actually seen wrestling, but I, but I get it. I get it. All right. Yeah, we're going to square that circle. We're going to have characters. We're going to have backstories. We're going to have everything, Andrew. And we're going to make bank. This is actually amazing. Uh, so, holy crap. So, all cat fighting is now done in the ring, televised worldwide, that I mm -hmm. can bet on. Exactly. Is it real? Yeah. Is, this still, is it real or is it like wrestling? Well, is wrestling real? Oh, God. Yeah, I don't know. Like, if people believe, then they believe. And that's, that's good enough for me. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, that's it. That's, that's it. That's what we're going for. Um, I want to really characterize some of these cats as well. I want to give them uh, little personalities that cool they can fully embrace. Cool wrestler names. So you um, could take Archie and call him the Perdurer. Exactly. And I yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, 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 I came up with some uh, some ideas earlier. Stone Claws Steve Porston. <laughs> good. Good. Yeah. The Undertake at. Oh. Yeah. Under spayer, um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, Andre the Giant Cat. <laughs> <laughs> There's a simplicity in that. Yeah, Rando, R Rando, Randy Macho Cat Savage. I mean, these are wrestlers from my youth. I don't know what modern wrestlers are called. Uh, and of course, Big Daddy Hay Cats, who's a classic British wrestler from the seventies and eighties. <laughs> Um, I think, you know, we go all in cats, we, we give them managers, we give them a uh, sideshow side, what are they called? Side men that stand on the edges of the thing and shout hype people. Uh, we get the really good, uh, uh, referees in to, to count down the matches. We get crowds. So someone's going to have to give it the garden in order to make a wrestling ring that we can then charge people 500 pounds a ticket in order to come and watch some 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 cats fight. A lot of those roles though are naturally filled already, right? Like the manager could be the cat's owner. They might have yeah. other pets who could be their side men. These things I think could naturally fall into place. Yeah. My, 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 so. my question is, so there's obviously the official ring, but yeah. you know, you say cats are going to fight. Yeah. If Ashmore's cats were fighting outside, do you then have to go and break them up and be like, no, 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 save it for the ring? Yeah, exactly. Also, also that's really good content to play like in the adverts, being like these cats hate each other so much they can't even wait to get into the ring. My my feeling about this is that if we give them this outlet and we also let them make huge amounts of money with which they can buy catnip, oh, and other so things, much catnip, yeah. Then they aren't. They're gonna, they're gonna fully embrace it, and they're not gonna fight themselves. They're not gonna fight unless it's for money. They're not gonna do it. Yeah, why no, would no. you? Why, exactly, a waste of time, waste of you energy. Know. Exactly. I mean, it's also good because cats are definitely they're currently missing from the economic system. Without having mm -hmm. purchasing power, they can't buy into capitalism like we can. <laughs> so this is they're a knock-on effect of the economy that now they can spend five, ten pounds on catnip. However much you're gonna pay them, I don't know. Yeah, well, I think we're going to pay them as much as we would pay real human wrestlers. Oh, oh not, okay, that's amazing. Excellent, we're yeah. We're not biased, yeah. And I think there's, you know, I think the future of wrestling actually is is cat wrestling. That's actually what it is. Um, they're much more athletic. They're much more nimble. They're much more lithe. You know, they are naturally aggressive uh, if, if my old cat is anything to go by. So I think this is really going to be, I think human wrestling, I mean, 
Dwayne the Rock Johnson, I think you're out, mate. I no. think it's done. <laughs> Hang up your boots. Pe- people look at cats and already imbue them with human like personalities. Mm. You know? Exactly. This is the next step. Now I wanna I wanna put on my inside brain, but I wanna give you a chance to potentially defend yourself from some future <laughs> controversies that might come up. Now, the haters, RSPCA, uh, people who believe in animal rights. <laughs> Those are good things, I think. But they might say to you, hey, isn't this a bit like cockfighting with a bit more steps? Now, (laughs) obviously, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that as a potential line of argument you might get. So how how would you defend yourself against a a complaint like that? Well, I don't think anyone who is in charge of or interested in human rights has ever phoned up... uh, the the World Wrestling Entertainment Federation <laughs> and said, "Hey there, what are you doing for humans? Why are you making them beat the crap out of each other?" I don't think anyone's ever done that. I guess they honest, have the fallback of well, it's just acting. You yeah, know? it's here. It's, it's not a, real. It's a, it's a soap opera. Yeah, for really high testosterone men. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, I think I think anyone can wrestle these days, even a cat, Andrew. Can you give me I I I can see it in my head. Yeah. Um you know, the the advert with the two cats facing off, the little masks on, yeah. sort of little clips back to them in the garden fighting, hyping it up. These two have been rivals for years and now the big fight, you know, huge bets being placed. But can you give me some of the the backstage drama that might happen. So I know there's a lot of storylines in wrestling. It's dense. I know also it's detached from reality. People like come back from the dead. All sorts of crazy stuff's happening. Can you give me just a taste of what you think the first storyline might be to kick this whole thing off? Well, I think we're going to go in hard, actually. We're going to go in big. Uh, we've got a cat already in mind for a storyline about possession. Um, and we're going to have a cat that's possessed by a ghost uh, in the first storyline, and the it's a the Undertaker cat <laughs> is going to have misburied a body. Oh, They're going to uh, you know on sacred cat ground actually. Damn. Um, after a big fight, and that is going to result in the rise of a sort of spectral evil cat that all the other cats are overly afraid of. Yeah. Um, until eventually a plucky ghost busting cat manages to beat them in a fight and everyone realizes actually they're just a normal cat they're just dressed up like a ghost for, for real though for real talk real talk imagine you yeah. saw a trailer for that on bbc one yeah like <laughs> you'd watch that <laughs> you'd be like what every human in the ring is taking it extremely seriously no yeah. one breaks no one says the joke you i would watch that yeah, yeah, exactly. That's why I think we're going to make a lot of money from this and get a lot of celebrities as well. Um, also, cats are underrepresented in films now That's these true. days. You know, there's not enough cat actors. I so went to go see Mission Impossible yesterday and one of the yeah. trailers before it was like a Samsung thing or something and they had a CGI cat. And I was like, wow, they can't even be bothered now to get a real cat, a trainer real cat. They're going to CGI the cat. It's well, I'll tell up. you what, the, the unions are going to be out about this. <laughs> That's the cat union is going to be all right there, and you don't want to piss the cat union off. That's it. No more cats in any of your films. Done. Done. Yeah. Uh, I I have one final one final question. Yeah. So we've we've stopped cats fighting. We've given them purchasing power. Uh, they have a cool stars new TV show. It's something for cats to aspire to. Do you imagine eventually we'll cross over with human wrestling? <laughs> And the Undertaker will have to fight the the cat equivalent of the Undertaker. The Undertaker. The Undertaker. Yeah. Um, I don't see that as a fair fight based on my fights with my cat. Oh, you're saying past. it's not it's not a fight. The cat's winning. The cat is gonna fuck you up. Yeah, yeah, man. That's it. Exactly. I think I so I think we need to keep the two things separately. Seriously. I think there's also some real rights issues around that as well. Some like you know, some publishing rights and IP stuff. Like we don't want to cross the two two streams. Okay. I think that would be bad. Yeah. 
Alex, do you want to just sum that up in 30 seconds then? Yeah. Oh, it's very simple. So we we embrace cats fighting. We start charging people money to watch. We train them up in all of the wrestling and acting ability that they need to make a world wrestling federation of cat wrestlers <laughs> or something. I love it. <laughs> now, though, to start that process, we're going to need to get some actual money. So should we go, oh, to, the, gonna should we go to our money. ad, our ad section? Yeah. Do you know what I really love, Andrew? No, what do you, what do you really love? I, I love pies, man. <laughs> <laughs> pies? Yeah. Like an apple pie. Yeah, like an apple pie, yeah. like a steak pie, like a fish pie, uh, any pie. Yeah, I like pies. Pies are delicious. And I don't, I don't disagree. Yeah, it's real good. A fun time. But do you know what I always feel whenever I go to the shops and I buy a pie? Uh, anger that there isn't more options. Yes, exactly. That's one of the things. And the other thing is that it was too easy. Oh. I went, and it's cumbersome as well not, to pack into the car. Simultaneously, not enough ch- challenge, but also too much challenge. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. You know, I, I, I go to the shops there and I'm scouting the shelves, and I'm like, oh, I pick up the steak and kidney. <laughs> are, you, are you are you okay? I just I <laughs> go on, go on, <laughs> go it's on. Just, <laughs> it's a serious ad section. Yeah, I'm dude. sorry. Don't know why you got the giggles, man. You know, I'm scouting the shelves in the shops. There, I might pick up a steak and kidney, and I'm like, oh, I don't want a steak and kidney pie tonight for dinner. And then I get home and I put it in the oven, and I'm like, I don't really feel like I've cooked too easy all i did was take this thing out of the box take it out of the foil put it in the oven you know that's it boring too easy but luckily i have recently discovered through an advert on this show which is right now a service (laughs) that sells individual pie bits wow that you then put together at home i fucking knew this was happening (laughs) <laughs> yeah wow that's amazing so you, yes. you wait to individual pie bits i'm not i'm guessing it's not a recipe i'm guessing this is like no. topping base yeah yeah does it have a nice exactly a nice sort of uh instruction book that comes with it yeah and it's got kind of a strange unpronounceable name the individual pie that's that's correct wow. andrew yes yeah <laughs> It's, it's pike here. <laughs> <laughs> fucking knew it. <laughs> so pike here is our is our app for today. <laughs> I guess it's that satisfaction of cooking without having to, without having to actually cook. You know. Yeah, I mean it is. It's weird to have to use an Allen key to make a pie, but. <laughs> You get over it pretty quickly, and the uh, and the outcome is incredibly delicious. I mean, cooking right now, I think, is not technical enough. There's not enough Allen keys and drills and hammers. <laughs> yeah. So I think Pi Key are going to do really well in this space. I think so. <laughs> I feel like uh, if someone else wanted to send in an advert for the show, or if someone wanted to sponsor an episode of the show, Andrew, what would be the way that they would do that? <laughs> you would do that by contacting us at brainsontheoutside at gmail.com. And you can send us all your business ideas or adverts or anything. And we'll power it out loud on the show. Just as we have today. <laughs> Welcome back, Andrew. I'll come back as well. I I have my own solution to this problem. Fabulous. So I uh, just peel the curtain back behind the production of the show. Sometimes we're at work and people tell us, you know, problems or thoughts they have that they think can make the show. And one person, Nathan, had a had a, just a general thought of what happens when we dismantle America's military industrial complex. 
And that question I already found itself onto the show. You know, even though it's an interesting thought thing, I want to dismantle America's military industrial complex. It's a big one, isn't it? It's a That's big, a big, big one. It's a tasty problem. Yeah. Like, it's a lot of surplus after that. You have a lot of stuff you could sell. Also, spy satellites, defensive Ooh. gear, computers to track and monitor things, mm. training regimes, and, and all sorts of armor sets <laughs> you give to <laughs> protect themselves. So, I would like to, to sort of propose we sort of kill two birds with one stone here. And. Wow unofficially give Nathan an answer to his question as well as defending these cats that are getting bullied. Okay. I propose we set up a service where we take the decommissioned Cold War era spy surplus that will eventually be found its way into public domain after Nathan dismantles the military industrial complex. I set up a business where we will sell or rent it to cat owners to make sure their cats aren't getting bullied. <laughs> wow. So we're going to be the cue yes. of cat protection. Yeah. I yeah. see. You come to us and we're like, these cats, I don't know where they're coming from, but they come into my garden and bully my cat. And we're like, hold on, don't worry. We have a 1970s spy satellite in geostationary orbit above your house. We can just turn that camera on and we can help you track these cats. And we can be the man in the chair guiding you, being like, okay, there's two cats coming over right now. You might want to get your cat out of the garden. <laughs> they have all this cool spy tech, you know, watches with lasers in it. And we can give that to your cat, you know? We can, we'll have access to the military training regimes people went on. We can train your cat up in self-defense. Nice. Yeah, okay. This is cool as well. Yeah. Like spy cats. Spy cat. Yeah. In your house, yeah. imagine you'd have your living room, you'd have your kitchen, you'd have your, your bathroom. Then you'd also have your room filled with 42 CRT monitors which have live feeds from different satellites throughout the world tracking the mean cats in your neighborhood. Holy moly. It's like Enemy of the State. Have you ever seen that movie? It's I've like not. a situation like that. But I'm I'm yeah. I'm I I've got a I've got to assume it's exactly like this. Yeah, it's it's you know, tracking Will Smith through the through the world through using satellites and CCTV cameras because someone slipped something into his pocket. Uh I I love it. It's exciting. It's interesting. And it, it's serving that dual purpose of making use of all this stuff that Nathan very kindly is going to decommission <laughs> for us as head of the UN Security Council in the future. Well, fingers crossed. Yeah. So I see there's that, there's that thing of uh, giving you oversight. And there's also all this other equipment, the spy equipment, you know, like, like, uh, Bulletproof tuxedos, <laughs> you know, um, lighters that also have like a little little dart in it. Uh, yeah. a, a watch that when you tap, explodes with nerve gas. You know, stuff that like James Bond or Mission Impossible would use. We yeah. could just give this to your cat as well. <laughs> so now your cat is self-defended against bully cats, but also has the opportunity to get a career in the secret services, go and spy cat spy missions. <laughs> this is thrilling, right? It makes cat ownership much more exciting. Yeah. I mean, only a cat's okay. Because like, your cat's going to go walk fine. about, right? Your yeah. cat's going to go on little trips out there normally. And it may as well be, you know, on Her Majesty's Secret Service at the same time, you know, out there foiling sort of evil cat conspiracies making sure other cat governments are stable and not being tied to topple by you know cat like the cat from James Bond that sits in his lap and he like strokes and he purrs like that's that's an evil cat right <laughs> it, it 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 is and I yeah yeah I, I it's adding a whole new layer to cat ownership and to war at the same time 
it's interesting. I do have some questions though. Yeah. Um, now, as I understand it, in the military industrial complex, yeah, uh, that's the sort of place where you buy a hammer and that hammer costs you four hundred thousand pounds. Yeah. Um, so it feels like that having forty two CRT TVs with live feeds from around the satellites around the world yeah. in my spare room is quite an expense. Uh, so not only am I buying a cat and then paying for its food or adopting a cat, hopefully from a shelter yeah, and then paying for its food and its vet bills and everything else. I'm also having to buy 8 billion pounds worth of spy equipment for my cat to keep it safe. So this is actually a misconception. Um, so it, okay. while it is true, it would cost you 8 billion pounds if you're buying modern stuff. Because, you know, if you're going to get like a, a predator drone and <laughs> a satellite that's actually like yeah. undiscoverable by other satellites and the nuclear sub under the water that you're tracking, yeah, that's going to cost you 8 billion. But I'm giving you the CRTs because I'm, I'm finding these in charity shops. And that satellite link, this is an old ass satellite, Alex. You're not getting that sort of millimeter perfect precision. It goes to cat <laughs> resolution and nothing else. <laughs> you say that you're finding all bits of spy equipment and charity shops. Well, just the CRT monitors. They are oh, spy equipment. That's just, that's just for the effect. <laughs> just, the CRTs right. are just there for the vibe. <laughs> right, right, okay. I see, I see. I see. So we're, gonna, we're giving you the old stuff because it's cheaper. And you know, your, cat, your cat could become a spy in its own right, and that could be a source of income. And also, you're not actually buying this stuff you you are effectively yeah. writing it from okay. us it's you know spy cat as a service right okay i mean that does feel like it would make it more affordable over the lifetime of a cat probably yeah probably uh, yeah now my second question is um is related actually to that thing that oh. you said just before about you know cats are spies and stuff uh it it is more of a concern, I guess, or a question about what are you going to do about this? Um, because you are giving cats a notoriously aloof, mildly aggressive, um, and uh, extremely not giving a fuck animal access to a whole bunch of incredibly high-end military equ equipment. <laughs> Um, I feel like from my own experience of my own cat, Archie being an absolute asshole 90% of the time, uh, if I gave him the tools to be an asshole that could take out half of the planet, <laughs> he would have done yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. He would Ar have done that. <laughs> Archie isn't just bullying your friends out. He's destabilizing America. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now, that He would do that. I mean, he was like, a tiny dictator. That is that is an issue. Yeah. The potential uh, we have inadvertently started a rogue nation of cats. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I, I believe, isn't there, uh, isn't it fairly hem commonly believed that cats will outlast everything? Like house cats will outlast everything because they're so well <laughs> adapted to life i i uh, i guess like there's a jo like genre of animal cockroach rat cat that can just uh yeah they'll be here survive. after the bomb drops next time yeah but like so i i, I get where you're coming from now i want to give yeah. it you know two little things here one is you know buyer beware you know right. you're buying all this <laughs> shit you do have some responsibility this isn't no one's claiming that these are neutral things you're buying. These are objects yeah. designed for sp spy craft. And you're the owner of a cat must bear some responsibility on the outlook. Now, the <laughs> owner, though, has does have access to those 42 CRTs to track the comings and goings of the mm -hmm. bully cats in their neighborhood. So <laughs> they should they have all the equipment they need as well to be launched into a game of cat and mouse with their own cat effectively <laughs> wow this is that this is a whole like there's a point isn't there where you're sitting at your crtvs looking at the other cats who are the cat bullies in the neighborhood and then you have a sudden 
a We The Bad Guys moment yeah. as your cat it decapitates two other cats <laughs> with the laser in its wristwatch. <laughs> see, my, my greater fear would be you'd be sitting watching your CRTs and then like, like the screen would go fuzzy for a second oh, and you don't yeah. know it, but they've fucking like, they've changed the cables around <laughs> and your cat, he ain't decapitating the other cats. He's like, we need to rise up. Like, yeah. And they've, un- you've, they've unionized. The cat coup. Us. Cat coup. What yeah. a way, though. What a way I, to go. I, the thing about that, I'm, I kind of have mixed feelings about this because I feel like they definitely wouldn't do a worse job than humans are currently doing. Wait, wait your, your, your mixed feelings isn't about the cats taking over the world. It's your own embarrassment that they'd do a good enough, they'd probably do a good job running it. <laughs> yeah. Shit. Like, I, I'm, I'm sort of like, oh, maybe we should just, just let the cats him, win. Give them a chance, you know. Give them the keys. Yeah, so that's that's kind of my idea. Okay. We take military surplus after the military industrial complex have collapsed and we yep. repurpose it to help your cat defend himself using spy equipment and you, the owner of the cat, have beautiful oversight of your garden now with decommissioned military satellites. You can be like the man in the chair in spy movies given orders to your cat to defend itself. And you can know when to take him in sight because all the mean cats are coming. So after hearing our two great ideas ready to be pitted into the crucible of the free market, we're now brought to the part of the show where we review previous ideas and see if the listeners who submitted these questions have any thoughts on them and which idea won now the answer to that right now is no because we've not heard back (laughs) (laughs) but I think we're currently sending it three wins to me Uh one win to you Uh and because of a loophole a listener found one win to one of the listeners (laughs) (sighs) yeah yeah that, that I believe that is correct but I think we're waiting on two yeah responses well now three after this episode as well but if if a listener had a, a business problem or a life problem Alex, they needed to get solved and yeah. they wanted business ideas suggestions for startups they could create to solve that problem uh-huh what would they do well andrew they should just drop us a little tiny tasty email on our email at brains on the outside at gmail.com that would be amazing. We love hearing from people. We would also love it if you left a review on the podcast app of your choice. But the absolutely best thing you could ever do for us is tell your friends. Let other people yeah. know. Share it on the social media website or app of your choice. You know, uh, word of mouth is the best way that people find out about podcasts and shows like ours. I would mean the world to us if you told people about it. It would be the absolute best and if that involves grabbing a pair of scissors in your place of work or your school and threatening to run down a corridor with them because that's like the most dangerous thing you can do unless people just listen to brains on the outside so be it we're not going to stop you from doing that in the real world you can't run with scissors but here on this podcast we, we we are actually we promote it we are pro running with scissors I th- running with scissors is one of the things that I like have nightmares about. Why is it only scissors? Are you allowed to run with a knife? Can you run with a compass? Can you run with other sharp things? <laughs> Cheese grater? What is it about running with scissors? I think it's something about the fact that you, if they were open and you tripped, then when you tripped, they'd close and you'd snip something off. <laughs> oh. Do we have a final idea, Andrew? Yeah, I do. I do actually have. I do actually have an idea. Good. It's based on my new hobby oh. and my love of uh, eating eating food. It <laughs> is, why isn't there a Sainsbury's or a little Tesco that is themed like it is set in the Warhammer 40k universe? <laughs> in the 41st Grimdark, <laughs> there is only war and Sainsbury's. <laughs> okay. Keep All your brain right. on the outside. Keep your brain on the outside, man. <laughs> <laughs>